If you're ready to jump into Airtable Sync, look no further than this video. We're going to be doing a deep dive on this newer feature from Airtable that allows you to connect one database to a specific view from another database so that you can share information between the two of them. So if that's of interest, stick around and let's get into it. Hey, I'm Gareth Pronovost. I am the owner at Gap Consulting, where we help you to organize and automate your business and life. If that's of interest and you want to learn more about how we do that, definitely swing by our website. I will include a link below to our free Airtable crash course that's going to help you get up to speed quickly and easily in Airtable. But without further ado, let's talk about the, the whole point of today's video, and it's all about this new feature, Airtable Sync. So, Quick backstory for you here. This is something that we've been requesting as Airtable users for quite a long time and Airtable just released a, you know, a version of what we were hoping for, where we can now connect a database to another database source in Airtable. It's really revolutionizing the way we are approaching problems. So let's go ahead and take a jump into my screen here and go through an example of why we might use this and you know how it works. So imagine if you will, that you have a database of contacts, all of your people, and we collect information like first name, last name, email, you know, in this case, I've got the role they played in, in a particular movie, what their, uh, their alignment was, are they good, are they evil, you know, etc. And so this data is really like at a company wide level, we might collect all this data, but then we might have operations in a particular like a, in a secondary database that, you know, manage a particular part of our workflow that needs to interact with these contacts. Previously, we would have had to create a contacts table in every single database that we worked with, and none of there wouldn't be a, a, a single source of truth, right? Every single one of these databases would have its own version of contacts, and they wouldn't necessarily all be talking. So that's where Airtable Sync really, you know, is, is a strong new feature, because now we can have one so one core source of truth for our contacts in this example, and it can be our contacts database. And then we can turn our other databases to look at segmented views or the full view of our actual contacts from that source of truth. So let's take a look. So here we are, we've got our contacts, right? And as I said, we have a certain, you know, amount of data that we collect on these contacts. And then Perhaps we have, you know, different segments of our contact list broken out in different views. For example, here I've built a view where we've applied a filter where alignment is good. So obviously in this particular view, we don't see any of the evil characters from, in this case, Lord of the Rings. We only see the, uh, the characters who fought on the side of good, right? So perhaps the particular, you know, operations in our secondary database only needs to have access to those good characters or in a realistic business use case maybe these are clients that fit certain prerequisites or have a certain status inside of our contacts table you know there are a number of different ways that you can segment and filter this data but once we have that data filtered then we can actually share this view with our secondary database so taking a quick look at this imaginary secondary database you know, we've got these projects that we're tracking. And again, as I said previously, we would have had to build another table inside of this database called clients. And it, we wouldn't have that single source of truth where all of our contacts were connected the right way, right? And so this is how we're going to get around it. Now we are able to actually track these projects and without creating uh, an entirely separate table for people, it, while we will have a table inside of here, it will actually just be a reflection of the grander database that holds all of the people. So here's how we set that up. Back in the people view or in the people uh, database, we will go ahead and create the view that we want to share with our other database. Again, as I said, in this case, it's people who have the alignment equal to good. So we get that by creating the specific view and then by applying the appropriate filters. Now the next step here is to share the view. So opening the share view here on our Airtable toolbar, we need to then make sure that we have selected the option that says allow data in this view to be synced to other bases. That should go without saying, but if we turn this off, then we're not gonna be able to do this. Now once we've got here, we can either sync this view to another base right from here, 
or we can go into that other base and get that view going. Now we get that access, we, we initiate that sync by actually creating a new table. So here I'm gonna create a new table and you'll see that I have this new option called create a synced table. I'm gonna go ahead and create a synced table here and you see it gives us some instruction, no big deal there, and we choose that shared view. So here's where this is all easy point and click. We don't even need to know the API, you know, the, the table name uh, or any of those other pieces of information. It's just point and click and it's really simple. So over here, this is called my contacts example table. That's what I named it. So I just find it in the list. If you have more than one table within that database, you can only sync one table at a time, but pick, pick which table you want to sync and then pick the view that you want to have. Now remember, you do have to share that view back in the contacts table. And from there, we're just gonna, we're just gonna click next. Now we get three different options uh, here in the settings. We can choose to only bring in certain fields or we can choose to bring in all of the fields. So we can come in here and manually select these if we'd like, or we can pull all of those fields into our new table. That's the first option. The second option is, are we gonna automatically sync changes at regular intervals? or are we going to only sync changes upon request? So we can actually manually request a sync to be run. And you know, this is really determining what kind of method for you know, updating this data do we wanna use. Now, personally, I think choosing the automatic option makes the most sense because it'll automatically sync on a, on a given interval, and then we can still request a manual sync. And we'll go into that in just a moment. Now, our third setting is what we wanna do with deleted records. If a record is deleted in the source table, do we want it to be deleted from this view as well? And realistically, this is gonna come down to a case by case basis. In my example here, if, we, if somebody accidentally removed a contact from the source data, then I wouldn't necessarily want them to be lost from my operations because then I'd have this operational project out in limbo. So I'm going to say leave the records in the table, but you might have a different use case. In any case, once you've set up those three uh, settings, then just say create table. And you'll notice that a new table is created and automatically is fully synced with all of the data that lives in our source table. So again, we have first name, last name, email, phone number, role, and alignment showing up here. If we didn't wanna have all these things, we could have opted to not sync them in that first setting. Now, any changes that are made need to be made in the source table. We can't actually make changes here. If I wanted to, let's say, uh, fix Sean's phone number, and maybe his phone number is not ending in 1245, but ends in 1255. And if I try typing here, you see that I get this message from Airtable that says, well, this field is synced from an external source and it cannot be edited here. So what I need to do is actually edit that external source. If I go back into my source table, and I access Sean here, and I make that change to his phone number, great. As I mentioned, that won't be instantly reflected over here. It will either run at a given interval, or you can manually pull that data. So if we wanna manually sync this information, we can click up at the top of the table, click Sync Now, and you see as I do that, it updates with any changes that were made in that source data. So very cool way to stay synced, but you have to make sure that you know where you're editing data. On that note, if somebody has permission to access both databases, here's a pro tip so that they don't have to go flipping through databases with everything they do. You can add a, a button inside of this table that opens up the record at the source level. So let's go ahead and do that. This is gonna be open source database or, or data, uh, let's say record, that's more appropriate. And what we're gonna do here is use a button. And when we pick inside of our buttons, we can name the button. If you're not familiar with buttons, definitely explore them. They are a very cool feature inside of Airtable, but I'm gonna say open record. And we have a new option inside of the button now to open a source record. Now this only applies in the case where we're using uh, uh, a synced table. So I'm going to open the source record when this button is pushed. I can change the way the button is, you know, presents. Maybe I like this light blue here and save. And now I have this nice button. And if I want to make a change to any of these uh, records here, 
by pushing this button, it's going to actually open up the corresponding record. So let's go ahead and take a look. I will, let's imagine that I was uh, working with Ian McKellen here and I needed to update his phone number to 1277. I will click. It opens in a new tab, the database that is the source database, and most importantly, opens directly to that record. And so now I can just go in and change that phone number to 1277. Perfect. And I can close this tab out in my browser, no problem. Of course, it doesn't automatically sync. It's not real time. So again, I would probably want to manually run that sync to make sure that that does get updated appropriately. So again, the potential downside here is that we don't have a direct integration. It's not real time, but this is honestly, the functionality is, is really all here. We can edit the source code. And of course I should mention that a caveat here is that you have access to the source database. So it is possible that, that somebody at an admin or creator level set this up, but doesn't give you access to the other database. In that case, you only see this information in your, uh, in your table, but you can't actually open the record if you don't have permissions to do so. But that being said, it, it is you know, able to be updated and allows people, especially throughout an organization, if you need to reduce the transparency that, that certain people or certain team members have access to within the database, this is a really neat feature that allows us a lot of advanced functionality. Now, one more pro tip before we go, I do want to point out that if you are trying to make any changes using automation in not the source database, but in the, the secondary database, well, remember, we can't actually make changes to any tables that are synced. We always have to make our changes at the source level. So one thing that I would recommend you do is when you're passing this information along in any kind of external automation, specifically if you're using Zapier or Integromat or any third-party automation tool, you'll need to pass along the what I call the parent or the source record ID. And it's a really easy thing to do. Inside of your source table, just create a field called record ID parent or record ID source and make it a formula field that brings in your record ID. The advantage to this is then this will be synced over to your secondary data source or data set. In this case, my hourly operations uh, table here or database. And I know the record ID for that source record. And I do want to point out that this is very different than the record ID for this particular database. So if I build a record ID for the child or the secondary, and I run a formula here and I look up the record ID formula, you'll notice, and let me put them next to each other, these do not match. So the record ID in the secondary table is different than the record ID in the source table. And again, we need to make changes to this data at the source table level, right? The source database and the source table. So passing that information along will be very helpful for you if you're building automations using third-party tools. Just remember that when you go to make changes to any information here, should that be a part of your automated process, it needs to happen at the source level. So anyhow, lots of cool new use cases with this amazing new feature. I look forward to hearing from you in the comments below how you are using this new feature. And if you have anything you'd like to see showcased or any examples that you'd really like to have worked out, let me know in the comments and I'll try to get to those in an upcoming video. As always, I hope you found that to be very helpful. If you did and you'd like to learn more, swing on by our website and check out all the resources we've put together. We have a free Airtable crash course that will get you up to speed quickly and easily in Airtable. And we also offer some paid services, including hourly consultations with our experts. We have some online group coaching programs and courses. And for the very advanced needs, we can build a bespoke project for you from scratch. So swing on by and I look forward to connecting with you soon.